This video is about putting care workers onto PLAT. It's a follow on from the introductory video, so if you've not watched that one, you should do so before you watch this. This assumes that you're inputting care workers kind of in bulk as you uh, get ready to start using the system. If you're um, already using the system, then you would input the care workers generally as applicants or through the recruitment module, uh, both of which are covered in separate uh, videos or will be. So like any other sort of data to input a care worker, you select new and then you choose your data type. And in this case, obviously we're going to do care worker. So we select this and we get a blank form, number of tabs across the top. Precisely which tabs you see will depend on what options you've got enabled on your particular installation. Your system admin will sort of have some influence and knowledge of that. So the first thing we're going to do here is uh, upload a photo. So this will uh, enable us to print out ID cards. And you see, as I type in the forename, the uh, bit up here that tells us what the record is changes. Let's say that Judy is known as Jude. I'll put the preferred name in there and you'll see that the care worker name here has uh, been updated to reflect that. Now precisely what format is used in this part of the screen here will depend on how your system is configured. Um, I've almost done everything that I need to to save the record, but uh, we see that there's a, a required field down here, the uh, the pink one. So I'm going to go as far as that, and then uh, and then stop. Oops. So this field here tells the system which organisation the care worker belongs to, and uh, I'm logged into the organization demo care so I have access to demo care and everything that sits below it and what sits below it is these two geographic organizations northern area and southern area and if I put um, my new care worker into northern area then only um, users who are assigned to northern area and demo care will be able to see her and uh, she won't be able to do any work for southern area but if I assign her to demo care, then she'll be able to work in the northern area or the southern area. And that's what I'm going to do. And at this point, you've seen that the save button has become enabled and I can save the record. And if you're just trying to get things on quickly in order to get ID cards out so that people can be ready to use the mobile app, then you've already done enough. And the next thing that you need to do is print the ID card with the QR code just from there and as it says the document will be emailed to you very soon and here it is just a, a very simple ID card the template is uh, something that you can configure yourself if you want to add remove or move things about so moving on to the next uh, the next page we've got the address and that's sort of a general thing so we've got three types of addresses uh, postal addresses phone numbers and emails each one of them you can have many of uh, so I'm gonna put, uh, put the address in here and uh, I'm gonna save the record there to demonstrate what happens. So the system has uh, gone away and used a, a geocoding service that we used to put a point on the map showing where the care worker lives. Now this doesn't matter so much for care workers as it does for clients but uh, it, uh, it can have uh, an influence where people pay for travel to the first job and travel from the last job so we need to know 
you know, where the care worker lives. And in this case, the geocoding is pretty accurate. That is where I intended, and I got that even without putting in a postcode. But I, I have seen instances where some weird addresses have been geocoded to places in Australia and South America. So uh, you don't really want that to happen. Now, the system will actually prevent, in most circumstances, if your system admin has configured the organisation properly, you saving a record where the address is outside of the area covered by your organisation. But if you do want to change precisely where the system thinks the location is for some reason, then you can do that using what three words here. Uh, that tab will open up this... Uh, dialogue where you can put in the what three words for the address and uh, that will be used instead. Okay, phone numbers. Let's just give a mobile number. And an email. Okay, so that's the uh, Address tab. Contacts tab is for recording any kind of contacts. Um, the system doesn't really make use of them on the uh, on the care worker side. Uh, you click on add and you can select anyone who's on the system. Now if you want to add a contact to the system at this point you can of course do so. You go to new and you right click on contact so that you don't close this tab. Then you go open link in new tab input your contact which is a very similar form to the one that we're currently looking at and then when you come back you'll be able to put the name of the contact in here I actually have my contact ready so I'll fill that in and we'll say that this is uh, Jude's emergency contact so I can add more contacts or if I want to remove one that I've put in by accident I can click on the X there. I'm going to skip the calendar for now and go on to the HR tab. So at the bottom of the HR tab this big green bar shows that um, we've got a fake application so because we're putting the person in directly as a care worker we don't have an application and we're assuming that we have one and it's been accepted. Uh, we don't have any references for the same reason but we do have the ability here to put in employment related documents and other HR activities. Now, what I can select from this list is being set up by your system administrator, but it's typically this sort of thing. So insurance documents, anything to do with the references, that kind of thing. And I'm going to leave this blank. And uh, because I've got a required field here and it's pink, if I were to just leave this blank and go on and then try and save the record, it would tell me, uh -uh, you can't do that because you've got a, a required field. So I need to delete that section. Moving on to employment. I've got national insurance number, payroll number, uh, a field here that I can check if I don't want people's pay advice to go to their email. If somebody's got shared email, for instance, that might be uh, useful. Um, a travel mode of foot. And this important field down here, employment status, uh, where the system is telling me that they're a successful applicant, which is uh, an automatic thing because I'm creating a care worker from scratch rather than from an application. But I've got this little red cross here telling me that uh, the requirements are not fully satisfied and I can click to see details. So if I click here, I can see that uh, this person can't be put in post because they need to have done some induction and moving and handling training. So I'm going to close this and go to the training tab. Click on add. And uh, now this induction has got uh, a provided and completed uh, field. So it's uh, some sort of self-learning thing, probably an e-learning. And uh, when I've put something in the completed field, it goes green, it's been done. And the moving and handling has been set up as a single training date. So that's a conventional sort of classroom training thing. OK, so now if I go back to the employment tab, instead of that red cross, I can see a green tick. So I could now select in post for my care worker. Now, if I change the travel mode from foot to car, I get the red cross back. And if I click here, 
I find out that uh, because I'm now going to use a car, I need to provide my insurance, my driving license and my MOT. And rather than do that, I'm just going to change that back to foot. Okay, so I'm now going to upgrade my successful applicant to an in-post person and uh, a new field appears, uh, allowing me to add a contract. And I will add an initial contract and um, I'll select a grade. This will have been set up for you by your, your admin. And I'll have tomorrow as my start date. So it looks like we're now ready to save the record, which I can do by clicking here or using the shortcut that we covered in the introductory video. But when I do click here, I get this message that uh, Jude requires a holiday year start once they have a start date. So now the uh, care worker has got a contract, the system's thinking, hang on a second, I need to start calculating their holidays. So if we just click on the holiday tab, uh, it's going to suggest a holiday year start for us, the 1st of January. If that's correct, that's all we need to do. We can now save the, save the record, even though we didn't do anything apart from visit that tab. If, uh, if some other date is used, then uh, yeah, we, can, uh, we can do that. So that's a fairly common one. And uh, when we save the record, the system will calculate the uh, the annual leave. Now, obviously, this is a new record. There's uh, no bookings in, and um, it looks like they don't even have any entitlement set up. So the uh, the organisation admin, in this case me, has not done their job properly. So uh, something would have to be sorted out there, and it would update automatically once the uh, once the entitlement was sorted. Um, but uh, I'm not going to do that now. I'm going to skip the uh, career uh, reviews and other people tab for now. These are things that we can, well, the career will be dealt with on the recruitment video. And um, the reviews and other people is probably something that you can start using a little while after you've got the system installed. So um, we're going to move now to the calendar and see what we can do there. So um, this calendar contains everything that we uh, that we know about the care worker and, and systems that, that deal with uh, you know, assigning work to care workers always need to have somewhere to record their availability as well as the work that has been assigned. And uh, this is no exception. And uh, we do this in the same place. And so we need to be able to switch mode between availability mode and uh, and events mode. And in fact, the default display mode is to display both, but it means that the, the event input mode is active and availability is displayed. This is not very meaningful when there's nothing on the calendar. So let's, uh, let's do the display availability and update and put something on the calendar. So I'm just going to click on today's record, which is the one with this uh, yellow background colour. I'm going to click at eight o'clock just one left mouse button click and it comes up saying availability starting at eight o'clock and I'll say that they're available until six o'clock in the evening and when I save that we see we get this uh, very bright green blob showing me that they're available so this is what availability looks like in availability mode it's the only thing you see and it's very bright green so I can switch to both mode or events mode and they'll both look the same as we are set up at the moment uh, and the availability sort of hides itself away as a light green wash and events sit on top of it now going to this options button and changing the mode is a bit of a bit of a faff so there's some shortcuts and the shortcuts are um, a for availability mode b for both mode and e for events mode so uh, I'm going to go back into availability mode and show you some other ways of entering availability. So the way I entered that first block was just to do one single click and then adjust the time. Another thing I can do is click, drag, release and save. So that puts in the block like that. Another slight shortcut is to hold down the shift key 
click, drag, release. And that way I don't have to go and confirm on the OK button. Another way is uh, without holding the shift key down is to click and drag. And then when this comes up, I can click on the repeat button and I can say this block of availability, this eight till three o'clock in the afternoon happens every Thursday. And if I uh, move to next week, which I can either do by clicking on this arrow here, or I can hit the N key for next week. So I'm going to do that N to go next week, N again, another week, N again, another week. And then I can go back to today, either by hitting P four times, which is a bit slow and cumbersome, or I can hit T for today. So T takes me straight back. So that's three shortcuts to move backwards and forwards, N for next, P for previous, and T for today. Uh, and there's another couple of shortcuts that are a bit too advanced for the scope of this video, but you can find out what they are by clicking on the uh, question mark there. OK, so now I'm just going to fill in uh, availability for the rest of the week. So let's go Friday. Make it like that and say, yeah, repeat. And now going forward, we're going to say this is happening every week, every weekday, blah. And if we go forward, we can see that that's happened. Actually, oh, I've entered that twice. So, yeah. Right, yes. I didn't really need to do that. Never mind. I'm going to delete that one. And I'm going to delete all events in the series. And then if I go next, we'll see that that's been sorted out. Um, and then a typical thing in care agencies is that people are expected to work a bit at weekends, maybe every other weekend. So let's set that up. So we'll say that uh, Jude has offered to work every other Saturday morning, starting this Saturday. So we'll put that in. And we'll say that repeats and it's weekly every two weeks on a Saturday. And if we go forward one week, we don't expect to see anything. And then the next week we do, and then we don't, and then we do. Blah, blah, blah. OK, let's go back to today and let's go into both mode. So that's showing our availability. And now we're going to draw an event on the calendar. And uh, because we don't yet have any clients, we've not been taught how to put those on. The only sort of event that we can put in is a non-contact event. And our system admin has helpfully set up the default event for Care Worker Calendar to be such a non-contact event. That's not necessarily the case, but it is here. And so I'm just going to draw myself a uh, non-contact event. It's a holiday type event and uh, there's nothing else to do really. I can click on save and I could have just held down the shift key and uh, done that without the uh, dialogue coming up. So that's uh, putting on availability, recurring bookings and non-contact bookings. So that's the end of this video and the, uh, the next video is going to show you how to put on a client.